Welcome back. Uh, I haven't posted to YouTube for some time. I have been busy. Uh, it's not that I haven't been out shooting. I have been out shooting. I have been doing some recording, uh, taking a bit of video here and there, um, lots of photos and things things like that of, of my activities on the range. However, it's working out what I want to post, what you guys will find interesting. So typically when I'm doing this, I'm introducing something new, something I use often, something I am changing, amending, improving. Um, my AR-15 was a good example, you know, I had it painted, had a few bits and pieces put on it, converted and stuff like that. Um, so today it's time to introduce my AK-47 or AKM, the civilian version of. This is currently styled out, tricked out if you like, um, with a tactical look. So it's got tactical handguard, tactical stock on it, tactical grip. Um, aside from that, once when I got this actually, uh, I got this from Olag at Russ Military down in Surrey. Uh, it came with a blonde stock set, so very light beach. is a Romanian WS-163, or in the States I would guess that they would call these Wasa 10s. However, we are in the UK market, okay, um, which means this is single shot. It doesn't reciprocate in the same way that semi-autos do. My AR-15 didn't, and nobody else's AR in the UK does either. Uh, so this is a Section 1, what we class as a Section 1 licensed um, firearm. Which means that if we want to reload this, we have to do this manually. So literally, fire a shot, rack it back, and we'll do this again in a second. Um, but yeah, so you can see at the moment, it's very tactical. I've had this about six weeks, six or seven weeks maybe. Um, and the stock set had to go. The thing is, with the stock sets that you get with these out of the box, particularly these Romanian ones, um, from what I've read and from what I've seen of, of the one that I got with this, they're not particularly good quality, the wood's not particularly good. Um, Handguards straight away were off, replaced those with this nice Zenitco handguard set from Russia, got this overnight from Grey Shop RU, so believe it or not, yes, you can get stuff from the Moscow area to the UK in around about 24, 36 hours, no problem at all, and that fits really nice. So that's an excellent addition um, to this. Later came the stock, the rear stock came off. And one thing I'll say about the original stock, they're not very well finished. What I mean by that, there is a gap, and all AKs do have a gap here for the wood to expand. However, um, the actual fit and finish was rubbish. The gap on it was massive, um, and there was a big ridge between the actual stock piece itself here and the trunnion. So, uh, I know it's just aesthetic, it doesn't alter the way the gun shoots, but I think uh, you have to you have to be happy with what you have. And I wasn't particularly happy with that. I know it's iconic to have in its wall, in its all wood furniture, and it's something I might go back to if I can find a really good, decent stock set. And if I was going to put another wood stock set back onto this, I'd probably look for the reddish brown coloured stuff that you get on the typical old Russian um, rifles. However, moving on, one of the reasons for, for changing the stock on the rear particularly is the fact um, that the, the, the length of the original stocks, the wood stocks, are very, very short. So you can see here, for example, that we can just adjust this very quickly. And it's just held, to, held together by a magnet at the back there, and you can move it out. We don't have any of that problem anymore with this, or I don't have any problem with this. I can make it short, I can make it long. And I've got a cheek riser on there as well. So that's great for when I put an optic onto this. I don't have one at the minute. I do have a side mount. I do have a red dot. You will have seen that, the FSR that I've got. I've used that on the system. So if I just flip this over, just to explain what I'm talking about. With the AKs now, um, unless you've got the folding, the very short folding stock version, then you have this area here. So this allows you to uh, put a clamp on. So there's an example. There is one that I've got. I've got my red dot. That does fit on nicely on here. It just slides on and locks. Um, and it means you can take your sight on and off very, very quickly. They don't lose zero. I was always worried about that. I've done it a couple of times at the range now and the red dot doesn't lose zero. So let's first of all start by getting rid of the magazine. And we'll just make sure that this is safe, that there is nothing inside this before I start messing about with it. One of the other changes I've made to this as well, just move this up a bit closer, is an Armacon finger safety. 
So again, I got this from um, Ivan the Bear Tactical in Russia. Again, not quite overnight, a couple of days to get here along with um, the stock actually. But what it means is I'm not forcing my hand out of the grip to move the safety on and off on the AK. It's a very, very simple safety system. It simply locks so that the uh, working parts can't come back. But the finger safety is great because we can we can shoot, we can move this back into safe whilst it's in battery, etc. And that's really easy to do. So we're just going to make sure this is safe. I'm going to cock this back. Have a look inside. Yep, yeah, all safe. And then release the working parts by pulling the trigger. Now, whilst I'm doing that, I will say that this is not what I would expect a standard AK-47 to trigger, trigger to be. There is this is a different trigger. I believe this is a different trigger to what a standard AK would have. So it is nice. Has a slight take up there, a couple of pound take up, and I have measured this at four and a half pounds, which is pretty good, I think. So an average of four, four and a half pound trigger pull, and it's very, very nice. It, you know, it breaks crisp and clean, which is what we want. So enough about um, that. Just a little bit about how the system actually uh, is broken down to become, or made if you like, uh, made UK spec or some Euro European spec rifles are also single shot, so I didn't know that there are places in Germany that are restricted, for example. So you can't run semi-auto on this. Um, basically what they've done, if I move to the front, where we've got the gas, we've got the gas um, parts up here, and we've got the rod in the back, the reciprocating rod that, when the round is fired, there's a hole in the barrel that forces the gas up, it pushes the rod back, um, ejects any rounds that are in there, picks up the next round from the magazine, pushes it in and so on. And that's how the system works. Very, very simple. To make this UK spec, what's happened is this has gone off to Germany from, from the factory, Romanian factory, from uh, off to Germany, and it's been doctored up. So what they've done is this part of the gas parts are filled with aluminium, so right up until the end here. And then the actual hole that allows the gas to travel up to the gas parts is also blocked. Now, the gas rod itself, you would think then, okay, this is filled with aluminium. The gas rod itself has been cut by probably about a quarter of an inch as well. Um, so I'll strip this down in a minute just to show you what I mean. But basically, uh, that's how that is. Apart from, apart from that chop, filling this up and closing that barrel, everything else is exactly as you would expect a normal AK-47 to look, operate and strip down. I do think the trigger is different, however. Um, but the inside of the trigger mechanism is exactly the same. It would break down and strip out exactly the same way as a normal AK-47 trigger. So I'll strip this down in a second. Just a little bit about the size. So one thing um, people often say that, you know, AK-47s, or I hear this a lot actually once I've been doing a bit of research on this, AK-47s are not accurate. They are as accurate as your eyes can see. Um, once these are zeroed, they are easily... I don't know, two MOA. They're probably designed to be three or four. Um, but I think I can get it better than that. I've had groups down as low as inch and a half at 75 meters with these sights open. Um, that's with a mixture of uh, factory ammo and home reloads. I'm still working on those, but I'm sure I can get that down. Now these are obviously going to, the accuracy is going to improve once I put an optic onto this, but simple post there and it's a very simple system. We wind it up or we wind it down to get it higher or lower, shoot higher or lower, and then we drift the sights left to right with a little tool. So, you know, you get a little tool there, there's the tool, simple enough, put it over the sights, drift it, and the, the other sight tool at the top there allows you to then turn that left or right to move it up or down. The rear sight, very short distance between the rear sight and the barrel sight, so the front sight and the rear sight, not a big distance, probably Probably the same as what you'd expect on an AR, except this would be at the back of your receiver. This would be at the back of your receiver, and then you'd have your front sight. So actually, in terms of distance, it's no different. Uh, this is just a notch type affair. So you can see we can move it up and down. It goes out to 1,000 metres on the reader. Um, and it does take a, get, a bit of getting used to. It's a different style of shooting, but um, not difficult to understand. Fairly simple to keep on target. It's just a case of point of aim then and then we are ready. So let's get into stripping 
well at least part stripping this down. Um, I don't want to start unscrewing the hand guards to get the gas parts out but I will take out all of the working parts inside here so you can see what happens inside. So let's take the safety off, flat this back to then um, charge the rifle, make sure the working parts are to the rear down there of the hammer breaks down as you would expect so top cover ribbed reinforced if you like um, we've got the spring mechanism and we've got the return rod and spring and the working parts and the bolt there so we pull this out and that's our return spring and rod catch and then we can just pull this back so this is all one piece and quite simply then I'll just put, push that down for a second we can then have a look at the rod so what we're thinking about here is, or what we're interested in particularly, is the bits they've chopped off. So this is the actual um, working parts of the interior of the AK. So we can see we've got our bolt. Now the other thing they've done with this as well, normally you'd spin this on the AK-47 to pull out this part here. So the actual bolt head itself can be um, can be managed. So you can change you can change the firing pin and things like that in the extractor. What the Germans have done, actually, they've pinned it at the back, so there's a pin that sits in here. And they've drilled that in and then pushed it in so that this doesn't come out. And it's just held in at the back. Now, we could go into the into actually either re-drilling this out to get this out because legally it's not a restriction in the UK. It probably is in Germany. Um, it's been proofed at this, this level here. There's a little proof mark there. But we could just take that pin out. I don't know if you can actually see that in there, but there's a little pin that sits just underneath this area and that stops us turning this um, anti-clockwise to then pull out the the bolt head but essentially the piston area piston spring you can see the quality is pretty good with this the machine is very very good I think um, but you can see here normally this this piece here this guide and these these two pins at the front and back wouldn't be there we'd have a bolt head here so we don't have another you know another half inch bolt head so they've cut that off, and that's because um, the working parts at the front there, the gas, the gas piston return area, is all all covered and filled with aluminium. So we can't use that. So just to make sure that actually fits, um, that's been taken out. <coughs> yes, I suppose you could unscrew this, and you could put another piece in with the actual thing, but then it wouldn't fit into the gas parts anyway. So um, it's pretty much academic. We can see that at the top there. I don't know if you can see that at all that's that says civil germany or civil ger which means this has been converted to a civilian version in this case single shot um, for the civilian market so that's the importers that do that and obviously it comes through the proof house in germany and gets a european proof mark so pretty much that is it you can see this is the blacked out version it's all black um, that will wear over time i suspect uh, if you look at videos of AK-47s in the States, these tend to be you know, either chromium or, or all black like this. So that's the internals. It's very, very simple. Just looking at um, the insides then, I mentioned the trigger group. So again, I'll try and get this so you can see this. Um, in fact, if I just pull the trigger there and release that up carefully, you'll be able to see in there that we've got... The actual spring mechanism it is the it is the wound spring that you would have on a typical AK-47. We can change that out, no problem at all. Do we need to? Probably not. Um, the actual trigger, I'm sure, is different. I don't think this is a standard AK. It's an AK style trigger, but it's definitely not a standard AK trigger. So apart from that. You can see that we've got the breech. There's nothing different in here, how this is made up. Um, it's exactly the same as anything else. And, and as I said before, there is no different, I don't think, to a standard AK. Um, aside from that, there isn't much else to say. They are fairly simple machines. Uh, maintenance, particularly now, there is no gas parts in this. So it's not reciprocating and firing gas back and forth. We do not need to worry about where on the bolt we don't need to worry about cleaning the gas parts particularly because there's no gas coming back here um, it's a bit like our versions of the AR-15s they are very clean to shoot because there is no gas reciprocating across the system um, maintenance fairly simple you know I've put I think around about 200 rounds through this 
and pretty much all I do when I bring this back. Strip it down as you can see here. I'll wipe over the working parts. Do nothing else with that. Work over the, wipe, uh, the working parts. I will pull the barrel through a couple of times and that is pretty much all I need to do. So it's very, very simple. The only other thing worth mentioning is that this came with an optional flash hider at the front. Um, it's not a suppressor or anything like that, it's just a flash hider. And these, interestingly, if you weren't aware, actually are 40mm thread. So they're threaded 40mm, but they are threaded anti-clockwise, so it's left-hand thread, not a right-hand thread as you would expect. Getting these on and off is simple. You don't need tools. Um, it's designed for the layman in the field to do for maintenance and you can see, oh, I don't know if you can see actually, there is a little nipple there. If we just push that in, we would be able to rotate this clockwise and take this off for maintenance. Um, I did get also the correct version of the flash hider with this, which is um, just canted off to the right actually, so that so the, the rifle kicks to the left. Uh, but as I said, it came with this, I'm going to leave that on. Fairly simple. Cleaning rod at the bottom, did come with a cleaning kit. Um, all OK should have one of these, they're easy to find, you know, that's not like these are rare or anything, so if you do need one, you can find one. Um, but the cleaning kit did come in, in the stock, in the stock piece, so cleaning brush, a little tool kit in there to do the sights, um, and that kind of stuff, all, all sitting in the stock. Don't need that really, because maintenance on this is really, really simple. I don't really have a lot more to say to this um, other than it is really really good to shoot, it is fun to shoot, there is um, so much time I want to spend on the range with this, it's just about actual time to get to the range and also um, you know the rounds, I'm, I'm building rounds at the minute and trying to work out what's best and I'm using a mixture of powders to do that. Um, I'm not looking for super accuracy, it's never going to be less than an inch, I wouldn't have thought. But I said that about my AR-15 and managed to get that really, really tight. So I think over time um, we will get there, particularly when this is completely bedded in. And I'm happy with it, um, then it will be even better. So the next step is a scope of some kind for this. I'm thinking that uh, I should really look at a primary arms ACSS reticle for it in 7.62 by 39 so just if you weren't aware let me just push this put this rifle to one side for a second different size magazines will just get over the magazine part so the system or the rifle did come with one 30 rounder this is it 30 round metal magazine typically the iconic view of an AK is a, is a mag like this uh, the banana mag as they call it, then you've got a 20 round, a bit smaller, and a 10. So this is full of dummy rounds. For those of you who haven't seen an AK-47 30 caliber round, there is two types. You get the um, Russian version of the 223, so uh, 5.45, but this is the 7.62 by 39 round. And this is a surplus round. Uh, a dummy it has been fired, just put a head back on. Um, just to put on show really, but yeah, good rounds, fairly simple to put together if you are reloading. Um, and interestingly, as it's 762 by 39 the barrel size is a 0.311 diameter barrel, not a 308 barrel. It will take 308s, obviously the difference is minute, but um, I'm actually reloading with 123 grain PPUs which are 0.310. And they seem to shoot really well, as I said, inch and a half spread with open sights, probably get that a bit tighter with uh, with a scope. So hopefully you found that interesting. I know that's fairly quick. Um, and as I get through with this, if I start to discover super, super accuracy, which I'm not expecting really, um, then we'll come back to this. We'll revisit this and, and look at some of the group sizes, the lows that we're making up and, you know, the types of products we're using. So cases, primers, etc. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Um, keep an eye on the site. I will be putting up some more content again now. I have a bit more time. 
Um, particularly we're coming into the winter months, the range tends to be a little bit lighter in terms of footfall, so uh, they don't like us filming on the range. However, we can do it when it's not busy. Thanks very much for your time.